some of you are looking at going to college or you are in a college in the Midwest and you, when you first went there, you're like, oh, it's fall, it's beautiful, everything's great. And then uh, February, then, uh, so let's see, October and then November and then December and then January hits. And then what you'll notice is that you didn't know that the thermometer actually went down that far. So what's happening out here? So now we have these, we're below zero in negative temperatures. So uh, I grew up in the Midwest, and uh, so I have have seen negative four degrees Fahrenheit multiple times I, than I care to count. So what is that in Celsius? So let's, here's our formula again. So I'm going to have negative four minus 32 times five ninths, and that's going to give me my degrees Celsius. And then that turns out to be, um, I will do a little bit of math, I think it turned out to be negative 36. So, negative 36C, uh, that's cold. Uh, however, in the future videos, you'll find that we see that temperature is related to the amount of energy that's in a gas or in a system. So, uh, William Thompson, you know him as Lord Kelvin, said, uh, this, if energy, if temperature is related to energy, we can't have negative temperatures. That's just a terrible idea. So uh, let's come up with a different scale. So he began to look at different gases and look at their pressures, uh, holding their volumes constant. He would look at the temperature. So this would be about 100 and 200 and then negative 100, negative 200, and so forth. So you have, you'd have one gas that would have these data points that would be there. And then he would go, oh, okay, well, let's, let's draw this thing out. Now I've got, so look, it's, I'm going to end up with some sort of negative. It keeps going. Oops. And when your hands are terrible, this is what happens, I don't know. Right. Look at it. I keep going. It crosses this zero pressure, because once I get to these negative pressures, negative pressure, that's not really a thing. So that doesn't exist. So I should have zero pressure at some place out here. But what if I have another gas? So let me have a different gas. And so this gas is going to be something, right? It's kind of like I'm gonna getting these pressure values here. And now when I go to measure this stuff out, you'll see that it ends up being, well, not really bad. And right, so there you go. Let's put some more data points to make it right. that that crosses almost in the same spot. So he's like, well, let me try another one. Maybe, or maybe these other ones that are out here. So I'm gonna. So then when he puts this, all right, gets his data points here, and then extrapolates them back. What he finds is they're all crossing at the same spot down here, where they're all gonna end up at some zero pressure. This turns out to be negative 273, I think 0 0.17, yeah, 0 0.15, 0 0.15 degrees Celsius. This is what he called absolute zero. Because at this point, the pressure is zero. The little molecules are not wiggling anymore. They're just sitting still. And so he said, you know what? This should be, This is, here is a consistent fiduciary point. It's not dependent on what pressure I'm at, what, the, what liquid I'm boiling, uh, if there's any impurities in this stuff. It's just a fundamental piece of the universe. But you know what the other thing he really liked is that there were 100 degrees from water, from, from, from freezing to boiling of water. So he... He liked the Celsius degree, and so one Kelvin is the same size as one, uh, the, the absolute, ma the magnitudes are the same, but Kelvin is Celsius degrees, I'm sorry, degrees Celsius, minus 273.15. So they're the same size, but now, um, you could do, move them around, and now they're not, notice the Celsius has a degree on it, that Romer had a degree on it, 
Fahrenheit has a degree on it. Kelvin does not. So we just talk about things that being uh, 200 Kelvin or 500, 500 Kelvin or 700 Kelvin or whatever that happens to be. So there we go.